Hello everyone and welcome, I'm Alex, the architect for back for app and in today's video we will continue our Flutter with Parse series of videos and today we will start the data objects section of this series where we will explore all the different properties that you can hold inside a Parse class. So here I have my to-do app that we saw on the last video, this is the same app that we are using for our React Native series and in order to uh, not to mix the React Native and the uh, Flutter part, the React Native will use the to-do class and I'll create a new class called to-do Flutter that will hold our Flutter values. And today specifically, I would like to talk about strings. So a string is a conjunction of characters that represents text and you can hold very, very high amounts of uh, text inside a parse properties. So uh, I do not recommend that you store very uh, big strings. Uh, you can store up to 16 megabytes of uh, data inside a, uh, a string for a class. But uh, when you start to deal with such uh, big strings, the payload when you try to retrieve data will be so much that the user experience in the end uh, will not be very good. So what you can try to do is uh, break this, that those strings in, uh, in a way that's faster to, faster to retrieve and then you, later on we will learn about uh, pointers and then you can point and only retrieve the uh, big strings when needed. So in order to set a string here, I'm going back to my Visual Studio code. Here I have created a back for app.dart file uh, where I summarized all the code that we learned on the first video. So uh, it's easier to read. So basically I created a back for app class here uh, where I uh, created a init parse method where I uh, initial initialize the parse SDK with my application ID and client key. And in order to set a uh, string property to a class, I'll first have to tell parse which class I'm working on. We do that by typing var to do flutter equals parse object and then passing as a string the name of the class. The name that you put here will be the name that you show here on the database browser. Then we're going to set a variable, a property. We do that by using the set method. We do, we do it like this, dot dot set, then pass on the uh, property name. The property name will be the one that is listed up here and a comma and then the property value, which will be the value that will be hold uh, inside that one column. With that out of the way, we can await to the flutter dot save. This will try to save the uh, uh, new variable for me. Uh, if it, it's an existing class, it will append a new object. If it's not an existing class, it will create the class and then create the new uh, object with that one uh, column set. So I'm going to save all this. And here on my uh, terminal, I'm going to do a flutter run. It will ask me if I want to run from my iPhone, which is connected to my Mac right now, uh, a iPhone 12, which is my simulator or Chrome, we're going to run on the simulator. So number two. It's launching. This is the previous build, so let's wait for it to close and open again. There you go. So as I didn't put any message for success, uh, we have to go back to our Google Chrome and reload the page. And here is my to do flutter class, which didn't exist in, uh, previously. So it was first created when, when I created my first object. And here it is my, um, my title. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm in the wrong class. So <laughs> to do Flutter, there you go. So here is my first object, the message as a string, uh, and then the content that I wrote 
as a value. So this is how you store strings. Always remember, you want to keep strings as small as possible and, and needed because big strings result in a bigger payload, which takes time to retrieve, especially when you are mobile data. So uh, always try to keep your strings as small as possible because it will result in a better experience for your end user. So I hope you liked this video and hope to see you on the next one where we will talk about numbers. See you soon. Bye bye.